Hey guys, Dan here with Pain Free You. Uh, in this video, I would like to talk about the mechanism of this uh, TMS, or what I sometimes refer to as distraction pain. Uh, Adam calls it diversion pain syndrome. Uh, they call it mind body syndrome. Essentially, um, there's a, several schools of thought as to exactly what's going on. Sarno theorized it was a distraction mechanism. And uh, Michael Murray had commented in the TMS, the mind-body syndrome group, um, that that would assume that the subconscious has a conscious mind to think and create this, hey, let's create a distraction. Um, so let me just kind of bullet point from a foundational standpoint, the three theories. And I would love to get your feedback as to which you think it is. Um, I think there's some, some truth to all of them. Um, so Sarno theorized that when we've got these repressed emotions that are threatening to burst into consciousness, the brain says they're too intense, too dangerous, too scary, and so let's create a distraction. And so I know Sarno believes that. Nicole Sachs teaches that it is a protection from the predator of these you know, uh, repressed emotions. Adam Heller believes it is a di diversion pain syndrome or a distraction process. Um, so there's a lot of experts there and they get really, really good results with their clients. Sarno certainly did. Um, the second theory is something that I believe is very possible and I talk about it a lot is that we've got the stress, we've got the tension, we've got the unresolved emotions, which are basically either repressed or consciously that we're clinging on to, and those create a chronic state of fight or flight. And that physiologically changes our body. Literally, it changes our body chemically. And I believe that TMS and the pain can be a reaction to this chronic state of fight or flight, this chronic state of adrenaline and cortisol flooding through our bloodstreams. And so it could be a reaction. The third theory is something that Dr. David Clark talks about, is that the unresolved emotions have nowhere to go, so they unload into the body. And that's what Michael Murray talked about. He's another gentleman in, the, uh, in these groups. And he was talking about that in a post today, and it really made me think, We've got three somewhat different theories, um, but they're all kind of the same. So Sarno could be right because once the pain happens and it becomes chronic, it serves as a very good distraction from your emotional world. And now all of a sudden you forgot about all the stressors in your life and now all you can think about is your pain. So it is a distraction. Again, as I may have pointed out in a past video, is it really the brain saying, hmm, we better come up with a distraction because those emotions are too scary? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think the subconscious really is that strategic or that conniving. Is it a reaction to the chronic state of fight or flight? Yes. I think number two and three are fairly similar in that these unresolved emotions um, that are bottled up um, have nowhere to go so they unload into the body and create pain in the body because these emotions need to be felt which is why as we look at the various modalities of getting better you know Sarno talk to your brain think psychologically you know journaling was one of the things he recommended Nicole Sachs journal speak uh, Adam Heller feel your emotions right now I am feeling anger um, and we turn away from the distraction or the pain and towards the emotions which um, are really at the cause of this, these unresolved emotions. And regardless of whether you believe it's a distraction, a reaction, or these bottled up emotions just unloading into the body and creating pain, it really doesn't matter because all of these theories have the same core answer, which is learn to get in touch with your feelings. Determine that these feelings are safe. Allow yourself to feel them. Don't sweat the pain because it's just a reaction or a distraction process, or your body just dumping all of this stress and tension and adrenaline into your body because we're not resolving these emotions. 
So regardless of what your belief is, it doesn't really matter. And we could argue about it and debate it all day long as to which, which it is and who's right. And, you know, how dare me say that Sarno might not be right with it being a distraction. None of that matters, guys. The answer, no matter which way you look at it, is to view your emotions as the key to the, do to the locked door. So feel your emotions, feel them deeply, feel them strongly. Convince yourself that they are safe. And look, they are unpleasant. I know that. They're, they're very unpleasant. And a lot of people say, well, the pain went away, but now I've got horrible anxiety. And that's awful, that's even worse than the pain. And you know, now all of a sudden they, they deem that these emotions of fear and anxiety are, uh, are worse than the pain. And, well, what's the fear about? Are they fearing that the pain will come back? Are they fearing that now I have to go back into the life that uh, perhaps my brain was protecting me from? You know, returning to the workforce, returning to social engagements, returning to living in a world that was particularly overwhelming, stressful, and perceived as dangerous. And so that has created this chronic state of tension, stress, fight or flight response because we're always so uptight about what's going on in the outside world and what are people going to think about me and we hold ourselves to these high standards of perfectionism that are almost unattainable so where is the anxiety coming from after you get rid of the pain or maybe you haven't even gotten rid of the pain but you still have anxiety some of it's about the symptoms themselves or even after the symptoms leave some of the anxiety is about oh no what if they come back right and what you expect you generally get so if you expect to feel these emotions or, or to uh, to hurt again you generally will so look it doesn't matter which theory you buy into frankly I buy into all three of them they all make sense to me a distraction makes sense because it works like a distraction once you get hit with that pain you're not thinking about your life I wasn't thinking about my two-year-old and money problems and a marriage that was good but had signs of trouble. I wasn't thinking about the job or the commute that I hated, uh, the fact that my company was starting to lay some people off. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about any of that when I was in pain. So yes, it is a distraction. Whether you believe it's a reaction, yes, I totally believe it. There's more and more science out there these days that stress changes the body physiologically. Stress causes illness all the time. Dr. David Clark's book, uh, They Can't Find Anything Wrong, is awesome because it goes beyond pain. It goes into all sorts of other symptoms, organs that have major problems as a result of stress. stress. And when the people recognize it and shift back to their, their emotional world, they get better. And these stress illnesses go away and there's no tissue damage. So whether it's a distraction or a reaction or this belief that the reaction causes the, the brain to unload these emotions into the body which causes the pain, all three are right. So let's not debate that. Let's just agree that your body is reacting to your emotional world, meaning emotional events cause physical events, period. Theories aside, emotional events cause physical events. The best way to get out of it, and everybody agrees on this, is to get in touch with your emotions, allow yourself to feel them. I like to explain treating your emotions as visitors, hold an open house for these visitors. Um, and I come up with all these strange analogies that hopefully are useful for you um, because that open house really tells you to welcome these emotions. Welcome them like a welcome guest. Don't run from them and reluctantly do this, you know, this process or this work or these journaling or feeling things with, an, you know, negative anticipation that all oh, this is going to be awful. I really hate doing this work. Look, if you hate sitting down and doing a process that allows you to feel your emotions, that's all the more reason why you should do it because you're so against feeling anything negative because you believe it's bad, that's all the more reason why you should. Because when you go through it and you come out the other side, you will be a stronger person. You will be more in touch with who you are. You'll figure out what means, you know, what matters and what doesn't. 
um, and perfectionism doesn't self-critical behavior doesn't it doesn't buy us anything and so self-love self-care self preservation um, is so important and as long as you're running around with that little negative roommate in your head going you're not worth anything you're bad you're not good enough you don't deserve love you don't deserve a good job you don't deserve a life without pain because you're kind of messed up and you know your parents may have told you all sorts of negative things about you that you still believe decades later um, so by going through this process by learning to feel your emotions and stop running from them stop believing that these emotions are bad they make you human right they make you human it's okay to be human it's okay to be frail it's okay to be um, hurt it's okay to be sad it's okay to be angry it's okay to be in a rage Ugh. right it's okay you're human it happens uh, so look let's get the debate over exactly what is causing the symptoms it's one of those three in my opinion if not all three distraction reaction and the subconscious brain because these emotions are unresolved and they're just bottled up they unload into the body and create pain it's one of those three but again the great news is that regardless of which three the answer is the same the answer is emotions have no meaning other than the meaning you assign to them so feel them right don't tell yourself that you're a weakling and a big baby if you feel sad uh, don't convince yourself that you're a bad person if you get angry or in a rage it doesn't mean you're just like your angry father it doesn't you're allowed to get angry especially when things are enraging um, there's anger everywhere you look you know you could be at the grocery store and two people cutting you off and blocking the aisle there's anger next thing you know you get in line and there's one teller there checking people out on a Saturday afternoon in a huge grocery store and now you've got 10 people in line in front of you and you're just about ready to get up to there to it till it's your turn and you know somebody in front of you pulls out their checkbook and starts writing it and the cashier who's been there three days has no idea how to process a check because it almost never happens and so that's enraging and you add on top of that those daily enraging things people cutting you off in traffic just stupid stuff and we're like ah, whatever it's not important I don't have time for that so I'm gonna bite my tongue I'm just gonna suck it up and right and you add that on top of all of the stuff that's much more significant in our lives family partners not treating us well um, or the way we believe we should be treated and look we add all of it together and all of these emotions are cumulative and they turn into this big mashy black ball of muck and unless you take the time to daily on a regular basis a daily practice to allow yourself to feel these emotions this black ball of mucky unpleasant emotions is going to grow and grow and grow until either your brain says we got to distract Dan from that or until your body reacts to the chronic state of adrenaline and cortisol in your system or all of these negative emotions that is a big black mashed ball of mush explodes into your body and creates pain whatever you believe happens it happens but it's all as a result of these chronically unresolved emotions emotions that you push away I don't want to deal with that I can't deal with that that makes me a bad person some of it happens subconsciously which is why we need to use our conscious mind to proactively allow ourselves to feel these emotions because if we simply let the subconscious run the show it's going to keep on repressing this stuff and it's going to keep on building up until it kind of explodes into pain um, so that's why a daily conscious practice with intention to allow yourself to be human allow yourself to be you know failable and, and fragile and feel these emotions that's okay that's what we're supposed to do and when you do it as a daily practice not just when you're in pain because look if you wait until you're in pain to do it then you try to play catch up that day it's not going to work and then you're just going to get more doubly frustrated and then you're going to 
pick on yourself for, well, I should have been doing this every day and now I got a pain flare up and oh, I'm just such an idiot, right? Look, I get it, been there, 13 years, 13 years. One, three, 13 years. I did all that stuff. And so commit to a daily practice. Allow yourself to feel your emotions. That's the answer. It truly is. And forget about your MRI. Forget about your doctor's visits. Forget about the 120 specialists that you've gone to see. Forget about the $100,000 you've spent on treatments. They didn't work. So why do you think the next doctor is going to help you? So look, emotional events cause physical events all the time. So let me know what you think about this. Was this helpful? It's a little bit of a TMS primer. TMS, my brother always calls it too much stress. And he's absolutely right. Too much stress. Well, how do you, how do you get out of that? Allow yourself to feel the emotions and then soothe yourself. Darn it, do something that's good for you. Self-care. Take five hours a week and just go do something for yourself. For nobody else. Don't worry about what other people think. Don't do it for anybody else. Just do something for yourself. Five hours a week, whether it's an hour a day for five days or just go disappear on a Saturday afternoon for half a day. Take care of yourself. Allow yourself to feel your emotions. And again, if you are dreading this process of feeling your emotions or journaling or something, that's all the more reason why you need to do this stuff because you have this belief that, oh, I don't want to do it because it's so unpleasant. It's awful. I hate it. Teeth gnashing. And so look, feel your emotions. Doesn't make you damaged or broken. Just makes you human. Feel them. Take this big black mushy ball of cumulative emotions and whittle away at it every day. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And pretty soon, your fight or flight response is going to turn down. And the adrenaline and cortisol is going to come down. And if you do some proactive things to soothe yourself and care for yourself, and whether it be meditating, deep breathing, take a nice walk, get out into nature, right? I'm going out on the kayak after I'm done shooting this, and I'm going to do a little bit of fishing out here. And even if I don't catch anything, I'll just float around. And so do things that make you feel better. So hopefully this helps. Let me know your thoughts. Let's get a dialogue going here. If you think I'm on target, if you think it's one of those three, if you think it's all three of them, or if you think it doesn't matter, like I don't think it matters, let's talk about it. Uh, if you have questions, comment below or send me an email at questions at pain for you. My next visit is going to be a uh, question that somebody asked about resuming physical activity. So keep an eye out for that one. So we will talk to you guys in the next video. Love you. You can get better. Just spend all your time on the emotions. Spend as little time as possible on the symptoms. Because as long as you're focusing on the symptoms, complaining about them, talking about them, worrying about them, fearing them, expecting them when you get up, they're going to continue. You get what you expect, what you focus on grows. So shift your focus away from the pain. And uh, just start feeling your emotions. That's the way out. So we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.